right, so we're going to do a pod review today on a pepper right around here somewhere. I'm not sure if it's on that side over there or... There it is. There it is. We're going to do a pod review on that pepper right there, and that is called... The, I believe it's pronounced guajillo. I could be wrong about that. If you're Spanish or Mexican, Central American, you might be able to pronounce it better for me, but I think that's pronounced G-U-A... J-I-L-L-O, and I think that's pronounced Guajillo. Okay, so if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. I won't get offended, but I want to be able to say it the correct way. So here they are. And I got a bunch of them all around the greenhouse. But I want to pick these off first. These are nice-sized peppers, too, that came off to this plant. This little plant put out some really good-sized peppers. I will have to say, growing them outdoors is going to give you much better results than growing them in the greenhouse where I grow them unless you got full sun Mike unfortunately I'm covered by trees and because of that reason look at that three look at those three what a beautiful set of peppers I have more to, I'm gonna pick some of the smaller ones I need to use these actually and a couple of these I'm gonna to try to dry out because I believe that's what they're generally used for. Now the guajillos up here, here's more guajillos. These are small because they're in a small pot, so they're gonna be smaller. But that's okay, that's good for our taste test. Okay, this is this is these are the small ones. And these are the big ones. And so they can get as big as this. I don't know if they get too much bigger than this. I'm sure they could get a little bigger than that, which is quite big, to be honest with you. I mean, this thing is as big as my hand over here, so there's some length on that. Or if you grow them in a smaller pot, you'll get them like this size, and you'll get more this way rather than few the large way. So it really depends. So here's some more. Pick these off. Here's another one. This is a nice example of what they look like. Just a gorgeous little pepper. Very gorgeous. I do not know if they have heat on them. I just simply do not know. I never grew this before, so I don't have any previous knowledge to it. I would imagine they have some heat. But I'm pretty sure that this pepper is dried out and sold as a dried pepper. And I do believe it's one of the Holy Trinity peppers. And I think the Holy Trinity peppers is the Guajillo. Malato, Islano is the other one, and it depends what part of Central America you're from, so everybody seems to have their own version of the Holy Trinity of peppers, and so, but I know this one is like in all three, you know, rec you know parts of the countries that recommend this pepper as being a Holy Trinity, but and I think the Ma Malagueta, Malagueta pepper, that might be another one of the Holy Trinities. Here's another one. Let's pick this one. That's another beauty. I might as well get them all off the plant. I don't know why these are so small. They should have been a little bigger than this. But that's what came out of the seeds. They're all this size. So it's almost like a small version. But we'll try this one. All right, so that's what it looks like. All right, let's turn you around and we'll give it a go. All right, guys, we're doing another pod review today on this pepper right here, and this is called the Guajillo pepper. It is one of the Holy Trinity peppers. I, there's several different variations of what the Holy Trinity of peppers is. I think Cascabel, the one that I always complain about, and some parts of Central America, they actually consider that to be one of the Holy Trinity of peppers. But, nonetheless, this is the Guajillo. That's what it looks like. This is a small one. The, the, they obviously get bigger than that because I have ones that grew outside and they're much bigger. They're twice the size of this. But let's give it a go. So far, no heat on it. Skins are very thick. Very thick skins. This pepper is used to dry. I can tell you that right now. 
It's a very thick skin pepper. It was very sweet in this stage when it's red. I'm not sure if you're supposed to pick them green and then dry them out and they turn brown. I'm not sure. But if you dry them out when they're red, I think they turn brown. I don't know. But the skins are very thick. I got to spit them out of my mouth. They really get stuck to the walls of your mouth. It's very hard to get those pieces out unless you sit there and spin them and spit them out. But the flavor of the pepper was interesting. It had a very sweet effect to it when you first eat it. Very, very sweet. And then after that sweetness kind of starts subsiding, you're able to pick up the undertones and overtones of the flavor of the pepper. And it has an interesting, weird kind of a flavor. It's it's very different. It kind of reminds me of the Pasilia Bajo, Bajo, or Bajo, I think it's called. It's another black type pepper. It kind of reminds me of that a little, that flavor. But I, I can't say it offhand because I haven't eaten that pepper in a while. And I kind of don't remember what it tastes like. But I do remember it having some kind of a chocolatey type flavor almost. Let me take another bite. It's just got a strange kind of an aftertaste. <clears throat> got to spit all these skins and seeds out, man. Um, it's very sweet in the beginning. The sweetness subsides relatively pretty quick. And then this flavor kind of starts to come in that settles in the back of your tongue. And I get, it's hard for me to grab it. It's just, it's just so faint in flavor. But it's pretty nice. The sweet part, if you were to get by all of that part, the sweet part would kind of fall into the bell pepper type of flavors, the anims, I guess, would kind of fall into that type of flavor. It's easy to eat. It's sweet. There's no heat on it. At least I don't detect any heat anyway. It's just the skins on this pepper are very, very thick. This is not like a fresh type of pepper you want to eat fresh. This is a drying pepper. This, this pepper is the one you'd want to grow for drying out pretty much. Maybe pickling, I don't know, but you would want to dry this one out. Those thick skins are just very difficult to get around. They get in your mouth and they just don't want to come out. They're very hard to get loose once they stick to the wall, roof of your mouth or something. They're very hard to get loose, but they are nevertheless a very nice pepper to grow. I will be growing these next year and hopefully maybe I'll winter them over. I'll just bring them out and let them do their thing again. But I'm going to try to dry these out over the winter and see if I can get some kind of powder from them. And then maybe I'll bring you back and I'll do a review on the powder once I can dry it out and see what the powder looks like. Show you what the skins look like when they dry out. But that's uh, my review for the guajillo pepper. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.